My name is Chris Yi, and I'm making a 3D puzzle platformer called Nectar. In the game, you play as a potted sunflower with his bumblebee companion, using globs of nectar to grow plants and manipulate the world. In this video, I'm going to talk about two new plants I've added to the game, and how one of them forced me to change the way the game is controlled. But first, let's talk about the other one, the lily pad. I've hinted at this one in previous devlogs, but now I can show you a closer look. Throughout the game, you'll come across bodies of water that block your progress, and you'll need to find a way to get across. One of those ways is the lily pad. So the way it works is I have a central stem that's sticking up from the water, and if you activate that stem with your nectar, then it grows three lily pads, up to three. I can adjust that, so either one, two, or three. Now I randomize the color of the flower on the stem just to add a little uh, visual flair, and I think it looks pretty good. I like the way it came out. And the lily pads float in the water. Obviously they hold your weight, and you can put things on them, and then if you go into the water, you can push the lily pads. And I'm hoping that I can create some puzzles where you put nectar on the lily pads and then you have to push them through maybe like a, a low ceiling where you can't fit. I've also bound each lily pad to the stem that it's connected to. Um, I didn't want the lily pads to wander too far away because it would get a little confusing about which stem activates which lily pad. So for that I just use a physics constraint to limit the distance that it gets from the stem. And to make that clear visually, I connect a vine from the lily pad to the stem, just so the player knows why they can't push the lily pad any further. So that's the lily pad. It's pretty straightforward to make, um, much easier than the previous tightrope I had to make. If you want to see the troubles I had making that, you can see devlog number six. But luckily, the lily pad wasn't nearly as difficult to make. Now the next plant type that I added, and the one that caused me a little bit of trouble, is the dandelion. So I knew I wanted a different way to traverse the world, and gliding seemed like a good way to do that. And I like the idea of using a dandelion to glide. So the player will grow the dandelion from the ground, uh, pluck them up, and then they can use the dandelion to float over large gaps. Now I wanted to limit the amount of floating, so I put some stamina on the dandelion, and to indicate to the player how much stamina is left, I use little fuzz particles. So as you get lower in stamina, then the fuzz particles fall off and the top of the dandelion becomes less and less populated with fuzz. And then when you run out of stamina, the player falls. I also have it so when you drop the dandelion, the fuzz falls apart and uh, it despawns, and then a new dandelion spawns from the original spot. That way, if you need the dandelion, then you, you can still get it. So the concept sounds easy enough, but there was a problem. For the rest of the game, every single object that I pick up, the pot character doesn't pick it up, it's the bee that picks it up, and I just had one button to pick up and drop the object. So if you wanted to pick something up, you'd hit the button. If you wanted to drop it, you'd hit the same button. But the thing is, it doesn't make sense for the bee to pick up the dandelion if I'm using it to glide. Really, the pot character has to be the one holding it. So that's what I did. I made it so that the pot character could pick up the dandelion with his hand and run around with it. But that also means that the bee can also be holding an object at the same time. And you can be holding two objects at once. And this also means that my one button for picking up and dropping things gets a lot more confusing. Because now that one button does four different things. It makes the bee pick something up. It makes the pot character pick something up. It makes the bee drop something and it makes the pot character drop something. And it's not immediately obvious which one is gonna happen when you push the button. For example, if you're holding a dandelion and you're standing near a rock, what will happen if you push the button? Will you pick up the rock or will you drop the dandelion? To be honest, I don't even know. I would have to try it out and see, but I would not be able to tell you what would happen in that scenario. So I knew I had to change this and I considered a couple options. I, I considered having a completely different button to handle the pot characters picking up and dropping versus the bees picking up and dropping. So for example, with a PlayStation controller, you could have square pick up and drop for the bee, and then triangle could pick up and drop for the pot character. And this is a decent option. This is definitely better than just the one button, but I thought it might be a little too difficult for the player to remember which button they have to push. 
since it's dependent on the type of object you're next to. I like the idea of just having one button to interact with everything. That way, it's very clear to the player what they need to push. So if the player is going through the entire game pushing square to pick up stuff and to interact with stuff, they might get confused if they come across the dandelion and they have to hit triangle instead. They might even push square and see that nothing happens and then just assume that they can't interact with the dandelion. And that's a problem. So instead, I decided to have one button for picking up and one button for dropping, regardless of what type of object it is. So for items that you interact with but you don't pick up, like the laser that I have or the mirrors that I have, um, there's an interact button and there's a cancel button. So I thought naturally I could just make the interact button the pickup button and the cancel button the drop button. So that's what I did. So now if we go back to that scenario that I said, if you're holding a dandelion and you're standing near a rock, you know that if you hit the interact button, you'll pick up the rock. And you also know that if you hit the cancel button, you'll drop the dandelion. You know exactly what you need to push for what you want to happen to happen, which is good. Now it does create the one scenario where I'm holding two things. I'm holding the dandelion and I'm also holding a rock. In that case, if I hit the drop button, it's a little unclear which of those two items is gonna drop. I had to decide myself which one is gonna drop. And since the dandelion despawns when you drop it, I didn't want the player to accidentally drop the dandelion if they didn't mean to. So I prioritized dropping the rock over the dandelion. Because a rock, if you drop it, you can just pick it back up. Now if you do want to drop the dandelion, then you will have to drop the rock first and then drop the dandelion and then pick up the rock again, which is a little annoying. But I don't really see too many scenarios where you would want to do that. Maybe I'm wrong. But if that becomes a problem, then maybe I'll change it again. But for now, I think this is a pretty good solution. I think it's the most intuitive option to have a pickup button and a drop button. So those are two plant types that I've added. As far as other plant types, I plan on adding one more, the Venus flytrap. I haven't done it yet, but that's one of the next things on my list. And I also plan on adding more functionality to the vine tightrope plant that I've added. I want to make it act as a slingshot as well. So those are two things I'm going to do with the plants going forward. And maybe add like a, a bouncy rope mechanic. I'm not sure about that yet, but um, a few people have suggested it and I am intrigued by the idea, so maybe. So that's how adding a dandelion to my game changed my player controller and which buttons you have to push to pick up and drop things. As for which buttons those are, that's up to you. In my next devlog I'll cover that a little more but I've been working on a fully remappable control system as part of my accessibility options. So that's a little tease of my next video. If you want to get notified about that video, you can subscribe to my channel. If you want to join my community, I have a Discord server. The link for that is in the description. And I also have a Steam page if you want to wishlist the game. That's one of the best ways to support me. But that's it. Thanks.